All right, just a quick heads up spoiler warning. If you have not reached the Junon region of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, then the things I'm going to show you and talk about in this video will be spoilers. So just wanted to give you guys a heads up. And also, if you plan on leaving a comment down below, I please urge you to not talk about anything that happens from Junon towards the end of the game. I'm not that far in just yet, and I don't want to get spoiled, and I don't want people who come across this video to get spoiled either. So thank you in advance. So I'm about 12 hours into Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I just reached the Junon region, and if I had to describe this game in one word, it would be love. This game is an absolute labor of love from the developers. The amount of attention to detail in this game that calls back to the original FF7 is just astounding. From the world building, to the little collectibles you can get, to the music, to the side quests and side areas, everything pays respect to the game that came before it. Not just Remake, but OG FF7. And it is an absolute triumph. It is gorgeous, and Square has somehow done, <laughs> so far, what many of us didn't know if they could do. They made a great open world game. Now again, I'm only 12 hours in. Things could go off the rails for me after that, but I kind of think they won't. But I just wanted to make this video just kind of talking about some of the things so far that I really love about Rebirth. And one of the biggest things is world building. This game does a fantastic job of building up this world, whether it's the characters you meet, the NPCs, the towns you visit, the regions, the enemies, the summon stuff, everything has purpose, especially the side quests. Nothing is thrown in this game just to be there. Nothing is here just to keep you busy. Nothing is there just to force you to do something you don't wanna do just to get a cool reward. Every piece of world intel, every optional battle I've done, every side quest, every tower I've unlocked, everything I've done so far in this game, I did because I wanted to do it. And for the first time since like Ghost of Tsushima, maybe Horizon Forbidden West, I'm playing an open world game where I want to explore every single nook and cranny of this world because it's great. It's fun. I want to do it. Exploring in itself is rewarding. And on top of that, you usually get pretty cool rewards anyway. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to talk about very briefly are the side quests. And as you know, I played through FF16 and I did not love those side quests. I thought most of them were pretty bad. There were a handful that I thought were pretty good that build upon the world and the characters. But for the most part, there was like four side quest types in that game and they were all very repetitive. To me, that is not the case with Rebirth. Every side quest I've done so far has been varied. It's been fun. It's been engaging because I'm learning not just more about the world and the specific region that I'm in, but I'm building my bond with the characters and the NPCs, and I'm being introduced to people that I genuinely like and want to know more about. And again, the key word here is rewarding. It's not just the reward you get at the end of the side quest, it's going through the side quest that feels rewarding in itself. And one of the ones I'll talk about very briefly is a Queen's Blood side quest where you meet this bartender in Calm and he's distraught because he's lost his favorite card. And this side quest has probably one of the best English localizations from a Japanese game I think I've ever seen <laughs> because it made me laugh super hard. But you're talking to this bartender and then you just ask him, why don't you just get the card back yourself? And his response is golden. Don't you think I would if I could? God, I'm a shit player, don't you get that? And I couldn't help but laugh at that because it just felt like the perfect depiction of someone who plays a trading card game or a video game who's distraught about something and they're disappointed with their own skill level. I just thought that response was hilarious. But anyway, you go through the side quest and when you finish it, you come back and he talks to Cloud and Tifa and goes, you know what? I'm gonna make you guys a cocktail, something special because you got my card back. And he goes, I heard about this bar in seventh heaven that made this really amazing cocktail and I'm gonna make it for you. And he makes the Cosmo Canyon for Cloud and Tifa. And that's such a really cool callback to Seven Remake. Like this little moment that those two share together is now brought back in Rebirth and it means even more now because Cloud and Tifa at this point in the story are kind of fractured. They're a little distant. So to have them do the side quest that brings them together and then get this really rewarding cutscene afterwards where they share a drink and Tifa is kind of, you know, re-imbued with some more hope because the guy realizes, hang on a second, you are the bartender from Seventh Heaven because Tifa tells him, you know, like, if you want to make this drink a little better, just add like a pinch of salt. And that's what cues the guy to go, oh, you're the bartender. So it's this really wonderful moment between the characters where you're building the bonds, you're building up the world, 
you're learning more about everything and it feels so great and rewarding. And another thing I genuinely love is the world intel. Exploring this world, going to the towers, unlocking new areas to explore is so well done and it never gets boring, at least as of right now. And one of my favorite things to come across is very Ghost of Tsushima-like. You're just out there exploring the world and you come across an owl who's making noise. So you naturally, you follow the owl and it leads you to this really beautiful, tranquil life spring, which is this natural formation of the life stream. All these beautiful crystals are flowing and there's this pool of like life stream Mako there and it's so peaceful. And the music that they choose to use for these specific spots is gorgeous. It's a gem from the original FF7 that once I heard it, I started to get a little bit teary-eyed because I'm like, oh my god, not only is the recreation of this track amazing, but how they chose to implement it is even more beautiful. Everything here has meaning, it has purpose. You're not just doing things to keep busy and get rewards. One of the things that's a really great example of that are the summons. So it's not just a situation where Chadley creates a summon in VR, you fight it and then you get it. Chadley comes across this world intel he creates the summon that represents those specific lands. So in this case, we're in the grasslands, that's Titan's territory. Now, when you unlock the summon first, the only difficulty option you have is full might. And if you try to fight the summon on full might on your first go, you're gonna get ass blasted. That's just how it goes. These summons are very difficult, but if you explore the region a little more, you'll come across these rocks that are glowing with yellow. Break the rock open and this gold orb comes out, which leads you to another rock. Break that one open, which leads you to a summon shrine. You go into the shrine, you analyze the shrine through a mini game. And by doing that, you unlock the different difficulty levels for each summon. And each summon so far has three different shrines. So if you go to every shrine, not only are you unlocking every difficulty level for the summon, but once you beat the summon and you get the summon materia, your summon is now even stronger. So there's incentive to go and find these shrines, not just to unlock the difficulty levels, not just to make the summon stronger, but you're learning more about the summon itself. Chadley gives you lore on the summon of Titan and where it comes from and how the lands were created by Titan. So you're learning about Titan, you're learning more about the grasslands and the area that you're currently exploring. And oh my God, man, <laughs> everything just feels like it has purpose. And I love that. Now, speaking of summons and boss battles, the boss battles I've had in this game so far have been absolutely awesome. I am playing on the dynamic mode, not normal, and it feels pretty good so far. I haven't died in any fights, but I've had moments where I've been rocked pretty hard and it forces me to kind of step back pause and really come up with a plan of attack and proper strategy to tackle the fights that I'm going through. So dynamic, in my opinion, if you're experienced with seven remake or action games, dynamic is the way to go for that difficulty. It feels like it's the right amount of hard for this game, even on a first playthrough. Now, the last two fights I want to talk about are Quizzicotal and the Midgar Zalem, or the Midgar Zorm, I believe is how it's pronounced in this game. With the Quizzicotl, or Quizzicotl, depending on your level of literacy, I was just minding my own business, exploring the wastelands as you do, and my pops up and tells me, hey, there's some strong energy signals in this area. There's a powerful enemy if you wanna fight it. So I lure the enemy out, and I get into this knockdown drag out brawl with Cloud, Aerith, and Barret against this big lightning bird who is kicking my butt, but I'm also giving it back just as good as I'm given. And it's this really awesome boss battle that just kind of happens in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's so well done. And you're doing cool synergy skill attacks like bullet batter where Barrett just starts firing a barrage of bullets at Cloud and he's deflecting them with his sword at the enemy. This stuff is so cool, man. It's just the bonds between the characters exist in combat, in side quests, in the story, in the cutscenes. It is 
the live stream essentially of this game. And the music that accompanies it, I believe is the battle theme, uh, Airbuster version, so it's sick. And it just gets your blood pumping and it's so fun and rewarding. And it turns out doing that fight when I did helped me complete a side quest that popped up later on. And the last fight I wanna bring up in this video, I know this video is very scattered and unorganized, but <laughs> I just started thinking about Rebirth and really just kind of being excited and gushing about the things that I really loved about it. And I'm just throwing them all into one video. But the last battle we have to talk about is the battle with the Midgar Zorm. I have been anticipating this fight for a very long time because as a kid playing the original FF7, I was terrified of this snake. I'm not a big fan of snakes in general. I was way more scared as a kid. As an adult, they don't scare me as much, but I like to avoid snakes if possible. So this was an opportunity for me <laughs> to kind of face my demons and kind of get over that fear of snakes. And this entire fight is so damn cool because the cutscene plays, you're walking over what you think is an island and it turns out not an island, it's the snake and it pops up, drains all the water from the swamp, and you're now in this big fight with a gigantic snake. And it turns out Tetsuya Nomura wanted the snake to be even bigger than it appeared in the game. They didn't do that. <laughs> it would have been super cool if they did. I think it's the right size as of right now, but it's this intimidating, kind of tough boss battle. I was taking some damage in this fight, but it's got such awesome movement and it's got such power to it. Its abilities are cool. The environment you fight in is sick, but the music, <laughs> again, as I'm playing through Rebirth, the one thing I keep saying to myself like seemingly every five to 10 minutes is, oh my God, the music. Because just to go off on a quick tangent real quick, every region has its own specific music and within every region are different sections so you've got grasslands you've got the wastelands you've got the swamp and all of those different areas have their own main theme what's even crazier is that there are different versions of that main theme depending on what area of that region that you're in and on top of that there's the battle versions of those themes and those battle versions sometimes have different battle themes it's insane the amount of money that went into this game i really need to know what the budget it is. It is astounding, but the music is fantastic. And while we're unorganized and going off on tangents, <laughs> the one thing I do want to bring up, the graphics. Now the performance mode is a little fuzzy, but according to Naoki Hamaguchi, they are adjusting that and they're going to release a patch that hopefully improves the visual fidelity in the performance mode. But overall, the graphics mode looks incredible. And the one thing I really needed to point out are the facial animations. Going from Remake to Rebirth, there's actually a surprisingly big leap in facial animations and how good they look. The characters in this game are gorgeous. The way their faces animate is insanely detailed. Um, so I just had to point that out very quickly. Getting back to the snake fight. <laughs> the third phase of this fight, the music change, is one of the greatest music changes I think I have heard in a video game. And this is where I'm going to end my commentary and I'm just gonna play out the rest of the battle for you so you can watch my fight and hear how incredible that music is. So with that being said, enjoy the rest of the video. I'm Curious Corduroy. Let me know in the comments down below without spoiling anything past Junon, what are you guys thinking about Rebirth so far? Are you guys in love with this game as much as I am? Let me know in the comments down below and please remember to always be excellent to one another. Enjoy this goddamn snake fight.